to the Rochester Local Podcast. My name is Becky Montpetit, and I am here today with Corbin Holman. Hi, Corbin. Hi, Becky. How are you? I'm great. I'm so glad that you're here today. I'm happy to be here. Before we get into it with Corbin, I want to take a quick minute to thank our sponsors, First Alliance Credit Union, and also the Edit Shop for their amazing styling of our wonderful set here. And I need to take a moment to let you know, those of you that can see, Corbin and I got the memo that it is a blue <laughs> floral day. Got to. On the Rochester Local Podcast. Well done, Corbin. Matching. I know. We're just really vibing with this whole yeah. set here. So well done. Corbin, I'm so happy you're here. Yeah, me too. I'm and happy. And you brought refreshments. Yeah, got it. Got to bring your old Ready? fashion. Cheers. Bing. Corbin is the bartender, one of the bartenders at Blue Duck Kitchen. Yeah. And Corbin, how long have you been there? I've been at Blue Duck uh, two, two and a half years now. Mm -hmm. Just I t Mid pandemic. Yeah. Well, I took over the took over the bar program when they reopened from uh, mm -hmm. from COVID. Before that, I was at Pescara and mm -hmm. Bitter and Poor and a, quite a few places at once. But uh, right. But yeah, I left uh, three jobs and just went to one that's just as much work as three jobs now but what was that like condensing everything into one well it was i mean we went from so i was at bitter and poor mm -hmm. pescara beetles and jack's bottle shop mm -hmm. so i left beetles pescara and bitter and poor i'm still at jack's bottle shop yeah. i've been doing the spirit buying over there yeah um but yeah it was definitely a big change it uh Becoming a bar manager and taking over a bar program was definitely been a big learning curve for me. So mm -hmm. leaving the three spots where it wasn't really much responsibility as at all and just staying on top of just service side yeah. of things and going into more of like the back of house stuff and that stuff that you don't see on the day to day right. that comes along with bar managing was definitely a big learning curve, but I've been really, really enjoying it. And right. Because it's a lot more than just like concocting drinks right and when i first went over there i was like oh yeah i love crumbing up with drinks i could do that and it's uh but yeah there's count and there's inventory and making sure you're not running out of anything because if anything you run out of anything that all falls back on you at that point so it's uh right. definitely a lot more responsibility and and stress coming along with that but it's in a good way I've, I've been really really happy to be there and be a part of it and you cannot run out of Sauv blanc for monty <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Monty oh, yeah. Blanc and your old fashions. I stay on top of them. <laughs> the, saw, or the the old fashions, they go back a long way. I mean, yeah. it was a staple on the Blue Duck Happy Hour menu when they first opened yeah. Yeah. in 2016, coming up on seven, seven years, years. Seven years in next August, month. Yep. Right? Yep. So I think I've told this story before, but um, AJ and I, we sat at Collider, which was above Blue Duck. Yeah. Um, and that opened the same month as Blue Duck did. And so we got to kind of be in on the first kind of customers that Blue Duck had. And we just kind of became regulars in the old fashioned. I just, it was just very synonymous with like, ending a work day or for me when I was um, really building Rochester mom at the time um, I would work full days I would have our sitter in the in, at the beginning of the day and then AJ would go home and take over the evening um, shift and send our sitter home and I would just continue working I would do that like once or wow. twice a week and so at the end of my day I'd work from like 7 a.m to like 9 p.m yeah and I'd go downstairs and I would have an old fashioned. There you go. I know. And so this was back when, you know, Paul was working the bar mm -hmm. and Chris, mm -hmm. shout outs to Chris and Jerry. Yep. We've got to get them in there too. So yep. it's just been fun for me to know and get to know all the bartenders. Yeah. So. And then when you when you came back from COVID, it was just a kind of a full reset on the bar because it was, it was there was no that because all Jerry had moved away and they had all yeah. kind of moved away and uh, so it was kind of a learning curve for you too, then I right, guess. But I just <laughs> getting used to me. I just make all the blue duck Casey bartenders and, be my yeah, friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just easy to in. do. Easy to do. <laughs> but. Oh, you're flattering <laughs> me. Um, no, but I before we get into questions, I think um, there's one thing that you did recently. It might have even been like a year ago now, but you went out to this really cool course. Was it in Portland? Oh yeah, the Portland Cocktail Week. Yeah. Yeah, tell yeah, me about that, that. Portland Cocktail Week is a great uh, program that's thrown on by this group called Lush Life. Mm -hmm. And they have other ones. So there is currently going on is uh, Tales of the Cocktail. Mm -hmm. And they have, uh, there's Portland Cocktail Week. Oh, and then uh, Camp Run Amuck is a whiskey one down in uh, in Kentucky Ooh, that cool. they go and do the bourbon trail. But 
all they ask of you is that you pay your flight and your stay for the most part. And they, all these courses are, are sponsored and taken care of. So you can, as long as you are a bartender in the industry, uh, though you can fly out there and there's a list of all these classes that you can sign up for. And it kind of goes election style or lottery style, which ones you get. But mm -hmm. the specific class that I was in was, uh, not so much on like the, side of creation more on like the how to run a bar better which mm -hmm. i think it was the course was called better bar tomorrow yeah and i think that was definitely beneficial for me in my position and it just talks about sustainability not only in products but sustainability in like self yeah. and and making sure your team is taking care of themselves mentally and physically wow. and uh just like a lot of really cool stuff on like and like in products like how you can use a lemon more than one way instead of mm. just juicing it instead of just zesting it there's different ways of using that and kind of yeah really cool really Super cool fascinating stuff and what I didn't realize at the time was after this class, you were if you were a student, you were required to go to all these sponsored events afterwards. Oh. So uh, <laughs> and when I was when I was, you would get done. You were around all these bartenders from ten a.m. till four p.m. when the class would end, and then you would go out from four p.m. till midnight yeah. doing all these all these like sponsored party events. Yeah. Essentially, you're just. Required to show up and and drink more, but it's uh as oh, shoot. as you know as you know bartenders are very outgoing, and uh -huh. I thought I was very outgoing until I was out there, and it's like I just need some time for myself. I just need a break. I just oh, want to go man. sit down in a dark room and not oh, hear anyone. But wow, what a cool experience! Yeah, yeah, it was really great. It was it was a lot of fun, and uh, I got a lot out of it. I yeah. feel like so definitely came away with it with some different mentality. Uh, mental ideas cool. and yeah oh yeah. man well you know obviously you know that we're big fans of the blue duck yeah. bar my favorite hangout for sure huge shout outs to mikey and casey yeah. right and yep. leo and leo yeah yeah Ooh, cannot forget leo new kid on the block right, mm -hmm. right. yeah exactly so, anyways let's jump into some questions for sure, you okay yeah. first of all what makes you good at your job we've kind of already touched on that. yeah so i mean i think a lot of uh when it comes to bartending it's a lot of just being on top of everything being able to manage knowing being able to you're kind of the in between uh front of house and back of house yeah. you're not quite you are a server but you're also creating like a like mm -hmm. a cook and so being able to manage both sides of that and being able to stay on top of your guests knowing what they need anticipating what they need before they have to ask for it and being uh being personable and being a welcoming face that people want to come back to yeah. over and over I think is a huge part of it I mean I think as long as if I always said that you could have the best cocktail in the world yeah but if you were a uh not a <laughs> <laughs> please yep, if you were but if you're uh you Jerk. can yeah you could have the best cocktail around, but if you're not friendly and not welcoming person, people are going to come and have that drink once and then maybe not want to come They're back. Hate it. But you could have mediocre cocktails and yeah. have a great personality and people will come back to you totally. over and over and over. And it doesn't, it's not as much as I love creating as best of cocktails yeah. as I can. I know that that's not the, that's not the first thing. The first no. thing is making sure people feel comfortable and welcome. And Absolutely. Taking it's a well-rounded experience, you know? Definitely the food at Blue Duck helps people coming back too, though. I would say so. <laughs> plus the mustache. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so you have out of town visitors where is one rochester place you will absolutely take them outside of blue dog well you know i was gonna i was going to say obviously it's gonna be blue yeah. dog um but there, you know if it were outside of blue duck and i it depends on what we were looking to do a lot of times we would if i were i would take them to either uh bitter and poor for yeah. cocktails because bitter and poor has a very comfy cozy cozy speakeasy yeah, great cocktail bar it. yep um, one of my new favorite restaurants, though, recently has been Marrow, and yes. I've been really blown away by their food. is mm -hmm. fantastic. Yep. Their drink program's great, and yep. I think uh, if we were going to go out to dinner, if it was not Blue Duck, it would be. Uh, You're gonna take it would be Marrow for sure. You are yeah. just like you know twenty yards the opposite right. direction. Right. Yeah. Exactly. And then so, we'd stop to Blue Duck right, for dessert. Of course. <laughs> but, not uh, too far from home base. But I, yeah, I think it's really exciting the new restaurants that are being opened up downtown, and like <laughs> there's, I'm really excited for our Paladar and yes. all these great new restaurants restaurants that are popping up and i hope that that continues for the mm -hmm. sake of rochester and downtown and 
bringing a little vibrancy exactly. to the food scene. Exactly. I know lots yeah. of different choices right in that little yeah. area right yeah. around Blue Duck. All right. What are two things your friends would say about you? Well, uh, I, I actually messaged a bunch of my friends before I came in here. And, Did uh, you? I don't think I got any serious answers back except for uh, that... Uh, that I am very hospitable when they uh, come over to my house, and, my, and I I do love to cook for them, yeah. and uh, like to make sure that they're comfortable at home. As outside of the bar, it's like I feel like when I have friends over, it's still that same bartender yes, energy. I can't, you can't you I can't, can't ever sit down. I can't ever sit down and get comfortable. Really, it's like no. what can I get you guys? I'm always kind of running around taking care of them. I'm either cooking or. Make it, mixing them up some drinks and trying to take care of them that way too. But yeah, I bet the the drinks at your house are real trash. Well, they're definitely over. not. They're definitely not to the level of uh, when they are at the bar because I definitely have more more syrups and citrus at at the bar than I do at home. Do you at, keep pre batched drinks at your house? I don't usually. I uh, I did have I do have a barrel that I'll barrel age a cocktail every oh. once in a while in. But oh. uh, I I actually so I had a that barrel age very fast. See? I had a barrel aged. Uh, <laughs> I had a barrel aged Boulevardier, which is a um, oh. a real classic cocktail yeah. of rye, sweet yeah. vermouth, and Campari. But uh, I had kind of for I was drinking out of it. I would just pour right out of it for my friends and everything for a while, and I think I forgot about it for like the last two months. So I think it had spent six months in this barrel, Ooh. and I <laughs> poured it out, and I knew I had more. I should have had more if it didn't lose a bunch of it from the barrel and everything, but. I poured it out. I maybe had like that much left in it. And uh, I tasted it and it was just like an explosion of flavors. Really? It was really cool. But um, other than that, I don't, I don't, I rarely make any syrups at home. I'll just use like maple syrup more often than not. Huh. And then I luckily will have like a lemon or a lime and figure out from there. But then what's your go to at home? Go to at home would be uh, probably a whiskey neat or, uh, oh, <laughs> or, yeah. Or I do really enjoy mezcals and stuff like that too. And I usually will drink my spirits neat at home. Or if I'm my Danielle, my girlfriend, yes. she'll make old fashions a lot of times. And then otherwise, if I'm feeling fancy, I'll whip up like a whiskey sour. Or I, I have, I'll make a margarita or something from time to time. But fancy, I bet. Mm -hmm. I bet even your lazy drinks are very, <laughs> very refined. All right, you're going to a movie and you have room for three snacks. You can sneak them in. What are they? Yeah, so uh, I would say one, my number one candy of choice are the blue raspberry sour punch straws. Blue raspberry. Oh, yes. Blue raspberry sour candy is my favorite. Blue is my favorite flavor of all time. Blue. But yeah, blue. yeah. Anything blue is your Anything favorite. Anything blue is my favorite. <laughs> But uh, yeah, blue there. Blue raspberry is like that one flavor that you can't recreate. It's not a real flavor, but you need to make know, a drink out of that. I wish. Yeah, that's the. Th I've always wanted to figure out a way of coming up how to do that, but I uh, haven't haven't dialed that in yet. But I would sneak in blue raspberry punch straws. I would probably bring it, sneak in a few beers, <laughs> and then. <laughs> But then I would buy the popcorn because you can't yes, sneak in no. popcorn. You got it. The the movie to... theater popcorn is the best. That you is can't... you agree. Yeah, agree. I, get, I have to buy it every time, and Danielle will give me give me a time give me a hard time about right. it. She's, you never finish it, but it's <laughs> I gotta have some. Gotta have a couple handfuls. I took my daughter to the Little Mermaid at the beginning of the summer, and I took her to the evening show. It was me. And it was her. We got snacks. By the end of the night, I think the two of us, it was a $75 evening. Yeah. It was, it's ridiculous. It, was, it does get really expensive. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it was not, I was not, I, I just don't go to movies that often. And, no. And I just didn't anticipate that. So, but that popcorn. Yeah, you have to. Uh, well, it, partly it was my fault because I had to get the Little Mermaid commemorative mm -hmm. bucket. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah. we, so, yes, we did uh, fill it up on the way out. Because free refills. You got to. Right? Yeah. So we had to fill that Just back to up. Just let it die on the counter overnight. <laughs> I know. I think I think AJ and Ted they did they did their damage yeah. on that popcorn yeah. when we got home. But no, the movie theater popcorn, there's just something about it. Now I have discovered a new candy and I have yeah? to tell you about it. It is Starburst Airs. Have you seen these? No. So you know how have you seen like foamy candy or like, something. Like almost like freeze dried? No, it's okay. not hard. It's 
in the UK they call it like foamy. Okay. Foamy candy. Yeah. But here it's marketed as like air, air or squashy. Smarties makes a squashy, but you can only get it one candy. It's like spongy. Oh, interesting. Very spongy. I have to look into that. And so I saw at the store the other day Starburst Air. Now that I've said it, you're going to start seeing them everywhere. Yeah, They're in a right. little bag like this, or you can get a bigger bag. And there's Starburst flavors, but the texture is totally different. You know how Starburst are very... Chewy, taffy. Chewy, yeah. but these are very, like, spongy. Do they, like, melt right away? No. No? Oh, no, it's like a combination between, like, spongy and gummy. Everyone that has tried them has been like, these are the best thing ever. <laughs> that's that's interesting. So I'm, you have to go and try Starburst Airs. I'm hunting those down. And now. they've got sours too. Perfect. Tropical sours. Perfect. Sour is my sour is my candy. There you go. Yeah, you have to make a you now you have to make blue raspberry <laughs> yeah. drink. I know Put it I, on the menu. So uh, uh I went down to Rock Filter. The distillery yes. down uh, in Spring Grove. Yeah. Uh, did the did a little tour of their distillery with Jack's Bottle Shop. Yeah. And when we were looking around, they had a... I looked at their cocktail menu afterwards at, when we sat down, and they had a blue raspberry simple syrup. So, of course, I had to ask them. And they said they take the blue raspberry uh, Kool-Aid, <gasps> and they make a Kool-Aid syrup out of it. I thought that was I thought that was very funny and, like, very approachable for... Uh, place where your whiskeys are at such high level yes. that you don't take it that serious that you're not too concerned about putting a blue raspberry right kool-aid into your into your whiskey and making a sour out of that but. i mean this could get a little expensive but like what if you just got your blue raspberry punch straws and like just melt them down yes yeah. like made a simple syrup or something that'd or be like, fun that would be a fun experiment for sure it might taste a little saccharin but yeah you know. yeah right yeah it might have some <laughs> off flavors there but anyway you try um uh, okay i kind of feel like i know the answer but maybe i don't maybe you're gonna throw a wild card best rochester burger blue dog i blue dog. know i have to but <laughs> i was going to say um i i was over at merrill and there i had their beef and cheddar because that's yes. my like guilty that's Love my guilty language. snack yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh they have a beef and cheddar on their mm -hmm. menu they also have a burger that you can add foie gras to that I really, what? I really want to try that burger with foie gras. That turns into a thirty dollar burger, but Real fast. The, yeah, yes. but yeah, but I, I was super intrigued by that. But I still need to try it. Yeah. So, Blue Duck for now is my favorite burger. But uh, why don't you explain the Blue Duck burger? It's yeah. also AJ's favorite burger in nice. town. Yeah, good. Yeah, I know it used to be on a different burger. That's you know, rest in peace, uh, loop breakfast burger, but it, now it is the blue duck burger, hands down. Explain it. Yeah, I mean, so I don't, I honestly don't know what makes it so good. It's because the, they take two patties, they sm they're smash patty style, smash patties, just American cheese, cheese. just like processed American mm -hmm. cheese. They're, the burger sauce is phenomenal. It's like a mac sauce kind of thing, yep, but dialed mac up. Yeah, mac sauce. And uh, then just the bun is just like never gets too soggy. It's the brioche, bun is just, right? Yeah, brioche bun. Yeah. And it, and then the pickles in there, just standard pickles. It's everything is just super standard basic, but it's just done so well. Like as long as you can just handle the standard, it doesn't have to be all fancy, fancy stuff thrown into it. And that's mm -hmm. what I love most about it, I think. And they actually did switch it up recently a little bit, and I haven't tried the new version of it. But all they've oh changed, my gosh. the patties, the cheese, the pickles, the Everything sauces, the all the same. But in, with the bun, they took it and they put like a Parmesan butter on it, fry it and smash it and then invert it. So you have like what would normally be the top bun is now upside down. Oh. And so you kind of have that crust and it just looks my gosh. looks really good. But I have not I've not tried it with that with that version of the bun yet. But and looking over I know. Yeah. I, I, like, what time is it? We'll, have, we'll hop over after we'll this over interview. Right at yeah. 345. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Okay, this is a good one. I like this one. What's the last photo you took on your phone? Um, so, well, the last photo is a screenshot of the questions because I had to send it because I had to send it to all my, to my mom and my friends and have to ask for, uh, ask for some ideas. Okay, second to last. And then the second last to uh, picture was another series of screenshots. I was watching this new, uh, pirate documentary on Netflix and I was laying in bed, maybe a couple drinks and a little bit later. And I, uh, was looking up. The timeline of when piracy was at its peak yeah. and when 
Columbus apparently founded uh founded the Americas uh-huh. and when America when we signed the declaration so it was a series of three screenshots I was sending out to well, my friends. Well, when was piracy but, at its peak then? Yeah, uh piracy at its peak was between 1650 and 1726. So what you're trying to say is you're born yeah, <laughs> yeah. in the wrong century. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I should have been a pirate. Should have been a pirate. But then before that, it was a picture of the new menu at the 507 public, public house. house. Yeah. So that was that was the picture that was bef- that was my last picture that I actually Took cool. without a screenshot. Without a screenshot. But yeah, it was gotcha. a picture of the menu. I was showing, sending it over to Danielle, seeing what she wanted to try for me Got- to bring home so, for her. Gotcha. So. Yes, I have to go down. I saw that yeah. it was open. So yeah, I gotta just go to- open. Was that yesterday? Monday? Yeah, yes. Monday. Monday, yeah. Yes, so for listeners and viewers, that's where the former Half Barrel mm-hmm, was, mm-hmm. Uh, across the street from the well on First Avenue Southwest. So that's an open now. Yeah. Um. But I'm more curious to know about this pirate documentary. <laughs> what was it called? Is it the one that I've been uh, seeing? Golden Age of Piracy yes, or something? It's newer. Yeah, yeah. I just saw it on Netflix and I just was randomly. It's one of my bored falling asleep shows now. That is. <laughs> is it good though? I mean, yeah. I think I think it's interesting. I uh, I had actually just seen a meme the other day. Uh, ladies, if you ever have any trouble making conversation with your significant other. <laughs> Ask them if they would rather be a pirate, a cowboy, or a samurai. And they oh. will have a lot of opinions on all three of them. And oh, so that's obviously I uh I've been looking at the at the watching the pirate documentary and it's been it's it seems like it, at least in my eyes, has at least more historical accuracy than Pirates of the Caribbean would. <laughs> Don't I want to believe that yeah. every ounce of that movie is true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Every ounce of that movie is just, complete truth. Yeah, exactly. No, I love if is it like a mini series? Yeah, I think there's six episodes. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I'm love on like me episode a six four. Episode yeah, mini yeah, just series. quick, easy, knock it out. And yes. Two evenings of falling asleep All watching right, it. I'm adding yep. it to my list. Yep. Perfect. Good recommendation. All right, fill in the blank. Rochester needs a. I got really excited for this question. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I have thought a lot of times on what Rochester needs. It's a question I get asked a lot of times Uh, as a bartender in the industry. A lot of people are like, what does Rochester need? Yep. And I have a lot of opinions like on expanding, uh, expanding like actual cocktail bars outside of downtown Rochester. I think that's something that the outskirts of Rochester are kind of missing is a craft cocktail bar or somewhere to get really, really well-crafted cocktails. Um, But when I really thought about it, what I would really, for me personally, like to see is a tiki bar Mm. in Rochester, I think would be a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. Um, And a indoor mini golf uh, bar, I think would be great. AJ likes that idea. I think an indoor mini golf place, like if you really do it up, and make it look really cool. You could have different mazes, different themes. It could be in different rooms. And obviously, it, it would need a bar. But, AJ's yeah. trying to talk to me off camera right now. He's, like, getting very excited <laughs> about this idea. Tell him about Can Can Wonderland. Yeah. You, I've heard. Yeah, I've you heard. Know about, have you never have been not, to Can Can no, Wonderland? No, no, I haven't been. Corbin, that's, up in, that's up in the Corbin, cities, right? Corbin. That's go in, there. Yeah. Go there your next day off. Okay. You will Love it. Do they have a bar? Yes. Okay. All right. <laughs> yes. Sold. <laughs> Can Can Wonderland is v- like you cannot. It's so unique. Every hole is artist, um, artist created, inspired, built. Everything is wacky, off the wall, outrageous. It's in a giant warehouse. Great bar underground you you kind of have to go through like this warehouse to get there but then the actual like indoor mini golf is several stories high yes like it's just a big open warehouse yeah and they have kid friendly times when you can go with your family. They have different events. Yeah, they've got an arcade. Oh, nice. You, yeah, something like that is you what. Need, yeah, you something need like to, that. You need to go. You absolutely have to go there. Is that and that's in that's in the cities, that's right? In that's Saint, in, is in St. Paul, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. You. Yeah. Yeah. You'd love it. Yep. Oh, perfect. Yep. Perfect. Yeah. You. Yeah. yeah. No, that would be really great. Maybe we can make a mini golf because. We always joke, so the lower level of our house, when we moved in, we were the second owners of our home. And when we were moving in, we bought it from this wonderful couple named Dick and Lucy. And when we were moving in, we found a sign that they had made up in their workshop 
are just over in their workshop and it was hand painted and it said Trader Dicks, Aloha. And we messaged them. We're in text contact with them because we made a really special connection with them. And we said, oh, that was probably from a party that we threw in the late 60s, early 70s. And they used to have tiki parties in, oh, the, no way. in the lower level here because we have a full kitchen down here. That's so cool. So we renamed our lower level kitchen Trader Dick's Aloha Lounge. Trader Dick's. I love yes, that. It's like Trader, Dick's, Trader Vic's. But right, yeah, yeah. Trader but, Dick's yeah. Aloha Lounge. So we could be your tiki bar and then we could build oh, our it. mini golf in the back. Love it. Down. Perfect. We're doing we've it. solved your we've solved your problem. <laughs> Check plus. What else do you need? <laughs> oh, oh shoot. No, 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 no. We're already conquered right. two of them. Okay. But... <laughs> well, I like your idea of an indoor mini golf because yeah. that would provide entertainment. Right. Another another uh watering hole entertainment. Right. Plus indoor um indoor options in the winter. That's and I mean there was that mini golf place that was over right right uh velocity. That right. was right by velocity or what what velocity used to you, be you, was yeah. And they had that mini golf and and I mean, it's a great idea, but if it's outdoors, it's you can only use it three, four months out of the year. It's Nobody true. wants to go out there in August, and you no. know, and or to yeah. I mean, today, today. is like a yeah, terrible, exactly. terribly hot day. All right, here's a good one. What's one thing you will always spend more money on? Um, so I was I was wondering about that question on exactly what it what what what, what it means, word. but. I mean, where my mind went originally was Danielle and I just bought our house in August. Yeah. And I will always have to keep spending more money on yeah. that. Well, the, well, the basement's unfinished there. Yeah. And uh, we're we're finishing the basement. We're trying to create a, well, I will have a wet bar down there and everything. Mm-hmm. And so I will always be spending more money on it. Yeah. So on on uh, products for that bar. And so yeah. keeping that product full and everything. So I'll always be spending more yeah. money on that. And, so a good example of this is like... Some people skimp on getting off-brand toilet paper. Oh, yeah, never. So some never. people are like, I am going to spend name-brand toilet paper. Or some people are like, I don't care about peanut butter. So I'm going to sure. get, get the off-brand peanut butter. But like, what's something that you are like, nope, I'm always flying Delta. I do not care. I do not care how much money it is. I'm fi- That's me. I mean, yeah, I am the same way. <laughs> I will, I, I've flown Sun Country and uh, Spirit enough that I Oof. just... I don't need another uh, city bus and uh-uh, with wings, uh, uh-uh. but Delta is yeah, of course. I'll always, I will never, as much as I can, yep. avoid uh, Sun Country Spirit. But I would say, um, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a big fan of like, of my like. I have a really big fan of uh, Grassroots hats. Oh. Uh, Grassroots is a really cool brand. This is actually yeah. that's a Grassroots shirt, but they're a really cool brand uh, based out of Colorado. There's one in Chicago and one in California now, and. They're uh, really known around, like, kind of more on, like, the music festival side of things, sure. like uh, electronic music festivals. Yeah. I used to go to those quite a bit in my past life, and <laughs> they, they, but they make really, really nice hats, and, oh. like, I, they, they're, like, lined on the inside with nice. this, like, silky cloth, and oh. those are, like, they're not cheap hats, but I would, I will always, like, if I'm going to buy a hat for myself yeah. that's not a... Liquor brand or a yeah. beer brand, then it's going to be a grassroots hat. Are they but, like brimmed hats or yeah, baseball caps? Well, they, or... they really, so the, a lot of people think that, well, a lot of their hats for the majority are, are flat brimmed hats. Uh huh. Um, but they do, they make bucket hats, beanies, and all nice. that stuff. But everybody's got to have a thing. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. Everybody has to have that thing yeah. that, they, <laughs> that they're going to spend their money on. Mm-hmm. Glad that you found your thing. And I, uh, I've been, this year, I've really gotten into golf. That's been a really Ooh. scary rabbit hole Ooh. that I've started to dig out, dug into. <laughs> That's getting really scary. You know, noticing the uh, golf brands and Uh-oh. seeing the seeing the prices of that. Ooh. Luckily, I haven't pulled the trigger on anything Ooh. yet, but yeah. uh, I I adopted all my clubs from my brother, and uh, <laughs> so luckily I've gotten into it for next to nothing besides the. 50 75 golf balls I've lost already this Shoot. year but you know that but I'm okay with the Kirkland brand golf co- golf balls. Sure. You know, I don't, I don't need, I'm I'm happy with the Kirkland. Right. I don't need I don't need a Titleist golf ball so if uh <laughs> if it's going to that there I'm okay with skipping money on that one. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Perfect. Just... You got your hats. You can skimp on the golf balls. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Perfect. It's yep. a balance. Okay, good. Um we got two more questions for you and then we're going to head to the sticker board. What would your warning label be? Your personal warning label. So I was really struggling with that one. I uh, was kind of going back and forth with a couple ideas. And uh, I got a really good one, though. That was uh, 
Caution may cause slurred speech. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. That's pretty good. Yeah. I like that. I thought, one. I thought it was, that one was a tough one. I was looking through all of them and that was the one I was stuck on. And then I was standing behind the bar at Blue Duck and then batching the old fashions. And I had a couple of the seltzers on tap and I was thinking about it and I was like, Yep, when people are sitting at the bar, their warning label on me would be uh, yes. causing slurred speech. I <laughs> like that. Or poor decisions, you know? <laughs> right? That's a good one. Or I good will... decisions, or really good decisions. It could go sure. either way. <laughs> little liquid courage. Yeah, exactly. Right? Sometimes you just need a little help making mm-hmm. the next best decision mm-hmm. of your life. All right, what are three things you love? And that I is love, our last question. I love hospitality. Yeah. I love taking care of people. Oh. Um. It's, I love the reactions I get from people when yeah. I'm when I feel I do a really good job for them uh-huh. and like the compliments people give me yeah. it just reassures me that what I'm doing is worth it. Yeah. It may not be the most like societal improvement, I guess, maybe, maybe, but Well, I wouldn't yeah. I got things to say about that. Yeah. But, but I and I would say uh I think the compliments I get from people really just keep pushing me to keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And I had one compliment the other day that was one of the, one of the, I, I want to say best or most unique compliments I've ever gotten. And it's kind of stuck with me. Yeah. It kind of came out of nowhere. The lady, uh, I had been serving them for 30, maybe 45 minutes. They yeah. had, right before they got their entrees, I asked, went over and I just checked in on them. Yeah. And the lady just out of nowhere goes, your mom must be so proud. I was like, I was just like shocked. I was like, what? Why? And she goes, she goes, I, I don't know. And I was like, okay, sounds good. And then I uh, stepped away and I, I went back to him like within a little bit. And she goes, I was thinking about it. I was like, thinking about what? She's Mm -hmm. like, why I said that? And I was like, oh, okay. What you got? And she goes, well, I just, I have two boys and you know, I just see how happy you are what you're do- oh, when you're doing this. God. I see how she was just complimenting me, saying how happy I looked, how good of a job I did, and how how sure she felt I was doing at everything. And she just said that that's all she wants for her boys when they grow up. Oh, my is to gosh. Be as happy. And I know. it's a, That was like one of the most unique question or compliments i had ever gotten and it you gotta just was stick like, that you gotta write it down i know I, write it down put it in your phone put right. it as a memory yeah oh, and that so that was that was one of those i know one of the yeah. that was like one of the most unique heartwarming compliments i had ever gotten yeah um, i love that so you love hospitality hospitality love is making one thing feel yeah people hospitable yeah yeah yep. hospitality i love the i love creating yeah i love the creation side of things i love <laughs> i love the Coming up with a unique, uh, well-balanced cocktail. Yeah. Is, uh, I love creating, and I love creating in other ways too. I love creating, planning out our basement at, at yeah. our house. Of Danielle's in my house. I love yeah. creating, kind of planning what, how we're going to finish everything, how it's going to look when it's done, and figuring all that side of out, everything out. And then, uh, obviously, I love my friends and family. And, yeah. Yeah. Everyone Danielle. around me. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Gosh, I loved meeting her the other day. Yeah. When did I meet her? Like six months ago? Maybe? Yeah. And I, it's it's always great. surprising when I have like a regular at the bar who I am like, <laughs> I've known you guys for ever since I've started yeah. here. I feel like, I feel like you and like other regulars, I feel like they're, you're like part of family at this oh. point. And uh, another regular, I don't know if you know Mark and Ellery. Yeah. Yeah. They had just met Danielle for the first time on last week. And I was like, how have you guys never met before? Oh like it just gosh. blew my mind. It, it was like it was just a really fun experience. I ran into them at Marrow and then I met them at Thai Pop and then we went down to Thursdays on first and it was just like yeah. Danielle needs to have office hours where she's like sits at the bar and she's <laughs> yeah. like, um, meets your regulars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, most of them have already met her, just right. not physically, you know? Right. <laughs> They're like, oh, we know yeah. everything about you, I but know. not. So not... she's got to have office hours. She's like, okay, so Danielle is going to be at the bar from six to eight. <laughs> yeah, have a little meet and greet at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, Danielle, you know what to do. Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah exactly. Okay, so Corbin, the last thing that we do on the Rochester Local Podcast. It's our sticker board, so yeah. we like to invite our guests to put a little sticker on the board of a favorite local business, and I kind of have a little inkling yep. of what you're going to do. Yep. I got, a, obviously, a Blue Duck sticker. A but, Blue Duck uh, sticker. Blue Duck hot dog. Blue Duck 
Hot dog. So uh, Eric, uh, one of the owners of yeah. Blue Duck, his daughter did uh, design these. She did all the paintings yes. inside Blue Duck. Jolie Clevin. Jolie is in, Clevin, uh, amazing out artist in Des Moines, Iowa, mm-hmm. doing uh, mm-hmm. tattoos. But so she designed that guy there. Amazing. Yeah. And hot dogs, Blue Ducks, um, hot dogs. are a bar staple. Yep, bar so, menu staple for sure. And Having Jolie those, Clevin uh, is an incredible artist. Not only artist, but she's also an incredible tattoo artist. Yeah, yeah. So you got to go look her up. But Corbin has graced our board with a Blue Duck hot dog sticker by the one and only Jolie Clevin. So thank you. Of course. Corbin, you have been a delight. Not only because you brought me my favorite cocktail in town but because of the conversation so yeah, of course thank, thank you so much for joining me thank you for having me yeah, it was, this was a lot of fun was yeah fun? yeah i really enjoyed yeah this. so thank you to all of you for listening and as always i hope to see you out and about <laughs> <laughs>